As we discussed in your kit, you'll see this Arduino Uno called from Key Studio. So this is the same as the normal Arduino Uno. It's just a different manufacturing, but the pin is a pinning out pin out is exactly the same. I just want to go over the what is actually on this board and where would you use the different pins? Because as you can see, there's many different pins. There's some capacitors. There's a USB. There's a power jack. Uh, let's just go through it and try to figure out what exactly is available and how we will use it in the projects going forward. So first you can see here is the black part here on top. This is called a DC jack. This is where you are can put your power. So this is normally maybe 5 volts to 12 volts. And this is just to power the Arduino if you don't have a USB or once your program is already on it. This is the USB. Here is where we'll we can power it and we can program it. So the USB is used to power and program. So those two we just discussed. This on the right hand side here is a reset button. So the reset button is just sometimes your program gets stuck and it's the same as pulling out the power and putting it back. The reset will just make sure your program starts at the beginning and just runs from the top again in case there was any problems or errors and something gets stuck. As like a computer at Windows sometimes just freezes and you just restart it or power cycle. Sometimes that happens in your microcontroller as well and you just need to reset it. Like any electronics you've known, it freezes. It's the same concept. Um, sometimes things just need reset. Now we get to the interesting parts. You'll see these pins on the left and right hand side. These are your pins that is connecting to your microcontroller at the side here. So this is actually where all the magic happens. This is called the at mega chip. And that is just an IC where the Arduino is programmed on and that controls all these pins. So they just made it much easier for you to get access to these pins by using these headers. So these pins you can think about is directly linked to my microcontroller that mega three to eight. So this is actually my brain that we spoke about. So if you guys have done the basic electronics tutorial, we spoke about, about a microcontroller, about ICs, what it actually is. This is a microcontroller. Now let's look at what is available on this microcontroller because it's basically this is this. So what's available on the left hand side? I won't get the reference. You would hardly ever use this. Uh, reset is linked to this button as well. So I can use a signal to reset my microcontroller if I want to. So if I make it low, it will reset. And if I keep it high, it will just carry on. Three volts is an output. So my USB gives five volts in. And on this board, it's got a chip that creates from five volts and makes 3.3 volts. So this is output. And then I've got five volts here, which is also an output. So this five volts is actually just directly the five volts from your USB or your DC jack. And then my ground which is my zero volt as we've discussed on our tutorials and then V in. This is just another place you can power the Arduino without using your DC jack or your USB. So you can put your own five volts to 12 volts in here. Then we get to the bottom is analog in. So what is analog? What is the difference between analog and digital? So analog. So analog is a variable value. So digital can be seen as ones and zeros. You know, like the boundaries that you see on sometimes in movies where it goes one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 that is digital where analog is like a voltage. Uh, it is mostly from zero volts to five volts or zero volts to 3.3 volts. So what that means is these signals over here can be any value between zero and five. And I mean any, it can be 4.99. Um, so that is analog. So this is used when we use our sensors like a temperature sensor. So the temperature sensor will give us an output value in a voltage. So it will give us a value between zero and five. And then we can use that value to determine what the temperature is. That's one of the projects we're going to do. Uh, probably the next project is so my temperature sensor can sense a temperature outside it's 22 degrees and it converts that to a voltage. So it will say 22 degrees is 2.1 volts. So my, my controller will find the 2.1 volts and we're going to program it to say when I see 2.1 volts, I know it's 22 degrees. Uh, we will do that, but that's basically what analog is and where you will use analog. So it's used a lot in sensors and controlling motors because if I've got a DC motor and I give it 5 volts, it will turn faster than I give it 
two volts. So I control the speed by controlling the analog out. And so we got five analog pins in the left hand side here. Then on the right hand side, you see another ground one that is the same. All these grounds are connected. And then we've got 13 digital pins. So digital, like I said, is it's one and zeros. So the digital is either high or low. So you can see this is my one and this is my zero. That's all it is, highs and low. So PWM stands for pulse width modulation. And that is basically how quickly do I make my signal high and low? What I mean by that is I can make it go up for a long, long time and then go down for a short time. Or I can make it go up very quickly, long, low, and carry on like this. So this is controllable and that is PWM. That's how quickly I pulse my different waves. And with that, I can use to control motors, like I spoke with the analog, analog zero to five volts. With the zero to five volts, I can control the speed of a motor, but I can also do that with PWM by making my pulses higher and slower, quicker. So I can use my PWM to speed up a motor as well. Then here at the bottom, we've got TX and RX. So TX stands for transmit, RX stands for receive. So it's basically a way for my microcontroller, my Arduino, to communicate to an outside device. Inside your kit, there are sensors that work on TX and RX. We will get there. So basically, my microcontroller sends a message to a different device and it talks. So it transmits. So it's like me speaking to you. And then I wait to receive something. So my microcontroller stops transmitting and it's just listening to you. What are you going to send me back? So this is an output sending a message and this is receiving a message. And here the signals will actually be high and low. And depending how fast and how low, we can decode this message to be a message that we can understand as humans. We'll get there. Don't stress too much. I'm just trying to explain to you what all these pins are. And so you can see in the future what type of stuff we're going to do and work on. Great. Now that we've done this and we understand a bit about the Arduino board, how the connectors work and stuff, uh, let's start programming it. Let's install Arduino IDE and let's see what happens when we try to blink an LED on this board. Let's write our first program. Now that we went over what's inside your kit and the Arduino that's in your kit and what actually the Arduino consists of, the digital inputs, the analog outputs and inputs, things like that. Let's look now at how do you install the Arduino programming, uh, how to install the Arduino IDE, and then how do we program the Arduino that's in your box. So that's what we're going to do now. So follow these steps. So we went over the Arduino, what all the pins are for, the digital outputs, the digital inputs, the analogs, and your voltage and ground. That's your most important pins on this board. So now we're going to have to find a way how to program our software on this board. And that is done by the Arduino IDE. And now I'm going to show you guys how to install the Arduino IDE on your computer. And then we're going to use it to program this board. Uh, I'll show you how to set it up. And then for our first program, we're just going to blink the LED on this board. And I'll show you guys how. So the first thing you have to do is go to Arduino.cc. And then here at the top, you'll see software. Click on it. And then you can start downloading it. So you can either download for your Windows app. Or what I normally do is I just download the normal Win 7 or newer. You can donate if you want, but the Arduino IDE is free. So for now, I'm just, just download. I've done it so many times. And now we just wait for it to finish. Once it's finished, you can just click on it and a window will pop up to install it. And you can just go next, 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 and it should be all good. So once you installed it by following the instructions, you can just click at the bottom left here if you're using Windows 10 or newer and just type in Arduino. You'll see the Arduino pops up, the Arduino IDE, and just click on it. You'll see a window like this pop up, and this is your Arduino IDE. So it consists of two parts, a setup and a loop. So in the setup is where you're going to set up if a pin is digital input, is a digital output, and how to set up the board in the first instant. So that means that part of the code only runs once. And then you'll get to the loop section, and this part of the code will keep running from top to bottom until you plug out the power of the Arduino. So now what we have to do is we've got this cable in our kit and the Arduino and you'll see it's a printer cable. So all you have to do is just click in there 
and then and then click it into a USB on your computer you'll hear a noise that happens and you can hear that doop, 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 and that means the USB uh, is connected to the Arduino and you should be fine now. Now what we have to do with the Arduino IDE is choose what port this is. So Arduino comes with many different types of boards. We've got the Uno, we've got the Mega, we've got the Micro, the Nano and all these different boards. The one you have in your kit is a Uno. So what we have to do is we go Tools, Board and you choose the Uno and this is already set. But as you can see there's many different Arduinos so just be careful of which Arduino you're using. So we go Arduino Uno. We, we have to choose the port that we're going to program it. And that is COM4 Arduino Uno. So the port is actually just your USB. So you'll see when I plug my USB out, the noise goes away and my port goes away. So there's no more COM4. So that's just the way the computer is communicating to Arduino Uno and it allows it to program. So the port, the COMS, is the communication between your PC and the Arduino. And now we choose our port. You just have to go back and there Arduino Uno. So what we want to do to test it if this board is connected properly is all you have to do is push the upload button. So on the left hand side you get the verify button. This button checks if the code that you've written is correct before it uploads. Um, but you can just click the upload button because the upload button will first verify it before it uploads. Uh, so verify is just checking your code with not uploading it to uh, Uno, your Arduino, and then upload, verifies, and then uploads the program to your Arduino. So push upload, you'll see at the bottom, now it's uploading and done uploading. That means this program has successfully been uploaded to my Arduino Uno. Now that we successfully installed the Arduino IDE, connected to our Arduino Uno, we saw the ports are correct, we could see the board, and we programmed the empty program onto Arduino, so all is ready for us to write a little program. What makes the Arduino so cool is that it comes with a lot of examples. So if I go here, File, you'll see there's a bunch of examples that you can use as code. So we're going to start off with a basics code called Blink. This is just to get you guys started, to get a feel for it, and to explain some of the some of the aspects of the Arduino, how to set it up. So what this example does is there is an LED on your Arduino Uno that you have that you can program. So this example is a blink program that will blink this LED on, off, on, off for every second. So let's just go look at the code that they gave us, see if we can make a bit sense of it before we start. So like I mentioned in the setup is where you set up your pins. We set it up either to be an output, an input, uh, my analogs, uh, you can give different variables. We will get there as this course or the, these tutorials carry on. So what they did was they set a pin mode. So I, I set my pin in a certain mode and I say LED built in. So LED built in is a name they gave the LED on the board. This is normally connected to a pin number. So let's say example, I wanted to make pin 21 an output, I would swap pin I would swap LED built in to 21 and that way I just made my pin 21 on my Arduino Uno to an output but the built LED built in name is the name they gave to the LED because it's not connected to a pin it's on the board itself and then you can see we just set it up and now the loop function so like they say the loop function runs over and over again forever so it will do a digital write delay digital write delay and then go to the top again so digital write kind of says what it's kind of does what it says. It writes a digital value to my LED pin. So that's the same here. So if I made this 21 and then I make this 21, that means I made my pin on my Arduino output. And then in the code, I write a one to my pin 21. So digital, like we mentioned in previous tutorials, one is high, zero is low, that's digital. Where analog is a voltage between zero volts and five volts. So it can be zero, one, two, three, four, or 1.1. So that's the difference between digital and analog, like we spoke previously in our tutorials. So we understand now that we made our LED pin on the board and output, and then we say, okay, we're gonna write a high value to this pin. So it's a digital, so it's either gonna be high or low, one or zero, and we're gonna make it high. So when I make something high, like with the LEDs we did, when I give it a voltage, the LED goes on. So I make 
this pin high, then I have a delay function of one second. So this is milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds is one second. And then I'll go to my next code and now I make it low. Digital, high and low. So I take the same pin and I make it low. And then I have another second delay and then I will go to the top. So this program will make a pin high, delay it for a second, make a pin low, delay it for a second and will continue until you cut off the power of the Adreno or push the reset button and we'll just stop for a while. So let's upload it and see what happens. You'll see it compile. It will compile a bit longer now because there's some code it has to break down and now it uploads and it's done uploading. And as you can see there is the LED blinking. One second on, one second off. One second on, one second off. So if I delete my code or I make a blank code like this and I upload this, look what happens. My LED will stop because my code is not there. I've got this code now. Now I put this code back and my LED should start blinking. One second off, on, one second off. And that is how easy it is to program a blinking LED with Arduino. And that's it guys. Thanks for joining us for another tutorial. This was quite a nice one. We went to detail about the Arduino board and we wrote our first program for the Arduino. We are gonna build on this. We're gonna start writing cool sensor projects. Uh, you're really gonna build some cool things. But for now, I think this is a good start. As always, please guys message me. You have direct contact with me. And let's chat about ideas. What, what have you noticed doing this? Uh, what challenges do you have? What don't you fully understand? And let me know where I can help you in more detail because maybe something I explained wasn't clear enough. So please guys, please send me messages. I love chatting to you guys. Until the next video, remember video every Saturday. And ne until next time, bye.